Hi guys, it's Daniel here. Recently we did a test, a team selection test for the Washington State HNT and PUMAC teams. So the questions were actually written by yours truly. Since we just had the test today and it's all finished, I thought might as well just do one of the problems. So this is problem number 7 of 10 on the uh, TST. Let's take a look. How many ways are there to completely tile a 3x3 square with 1x1 and 2x2 by isosceles right triangle tiles? So basically, what a 1x1 right isosceles triangle tile is half of a 1x1 square, and the 2x2 is half of the 2x2 square. So how can we tile these onto a 3x3 square? So first off, just uh, this doing casework uh, in a stupid way seems totally uh, like impossible because it doesn't seem like there's any sort of nice ways to do this. Um, one idea we could have is we can do casework on where the big triangles go. First, how many big triangles there are and where the big triangles go. So let's try to observe how um, placing the big triangles will affect the other tiles. So let's just say that we place the right triangles um, as the example shows. So what tiles are forced? Well, we see that this tile is forced because, see, this tile right here is forced as well as this tile right here is forced because uh, something has to cover the slant that this big tile gives. And similarly, this triangle and this triangle are both forced by this big triangle as well. So this gives us the idea that whenever we have a 2x2 two two right isosceles triangle, then these two pieces are forced. In other words, um, the big isosceles right triangle um, is essentially just a part of an L tile that we're always going to use. However, this observation isn't quite right because there are a few special cases. For example, instead of covering a big isosceles right triangle with two small triangles, we can cover it with one big isosceles right triangle. So that's another case we have to consider. In addition, we also have the case that if it's covered in a slightly staggered manner, for example, like this. In this case, since we are only working on a 3x3 three three square, then this tile must be forced and this tile must be forced, giving us a Z-shaped tile. So we should continue looking for any other special cases. And in this case, we find that, that there are actually no more special cases. Basically, all our tiles will consist of one of the following either two small triangles that form a 1x1 square, two big triangles that form a 2x2 two by two, two by two square, uh, an L tile or a Z tile. So these consist entirely of the tiles that we can use in general. So instead of considering the, the right associated triangle tiles, we can consider these four tiles instead. So now all that is left to do is a bunch of casework. So first off, let's consider the Z tile. So the Z tile can be oriented it in four different ways. We can have it, um, we can have it like this, or we can have it like this, or we're gonna have it like this, oops, or we can have it like this, or like this, okay? So there's four different ways to orient this Z tile, so we multiply by four. And then what else is remaining? We have, well, since this takes up five tiles, we have four tiles remaining, and these can only be filled in by these one by one tiles. And each of these 1 by 1 tiles can be oriented in two ways, so we multiply it by 2 to the power of 4. So that's the case of the Z tile. Now let's consider um, the 2 by 2 tile. So the 2 by 2 tile can uh, be by itself or be with an L tile. So let's consider the 2 by 2 and the L tile. So the 2 by 2 tile can be oriented in two ways, and it can also be placed in one of the four, one of the four corners of the 3 by 3 square, giving four more ways. And once we place the 2x2 two two tile, the L tile is forced. So we just multiply by one or just don't multiply anything at all. And finally, after we place the L tile, we have two more uh, one by one squares that we can decide. And of course, this gives two to the power of two different ways to decide those. So our 2x2 two two plus L tile has this many cases. Now let's do the 2x2 two two tile alone. So again, this has two ways to orient the 2x2 two two tile, as well as four uh, different corners that we can place it. And out of the remaining five tiles, there's two to the power of five ways. Now let's consider having two L tiles. So 
for two L tiles, first off, we notice that there must be one L tile such that its corner, um, like the bend on the L is at one of the vertices of the square. Because um, we can just check that if the bend is, if one of the tiles bends is not at the vert vertex of a square, then the other tile must have its bend on the vertex of a square. You can just check this yourself by just playing around with it. So um, uh, for first we can place uh, this tile right here, and then we can place uh, the remaining L tile. So we can place the remaining L tile here, we can place it 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 here, and finally we can place it here. So for the first one, two, three, four, five, for the first five cases that I described, um, oops, I think I accidentally described two cases that are the same, so these. So for the first five cases that I described, um, for every different corner, for, for example, um, for this L tile, if it occupies a different corner, we get a different tiling. So we get four times five. But for this final way right here, where the tile looks like this, um, in fact, we don't have four ways because they're symmetric. We only have two ways. So actually, the total number of ways to place two L tiles is four times five plus two, which is 22. And of course, we have three one by one tiles left to place, so this is two to the power of three. Now let's consider the case where there's one L tile. So for one L tile, we can either place it um, at any of the four corners of the three by three square, and we can orient it in any of the four different ways. So there's four times four ways to place a single L tile. And finally, we have six different uh, one by one tiles left to fill, so that's two to the power of six. One more case, we have absolutely nothing except for one by one tiles, and of course, this has two to the power of nine different ways. So let's go over everything and add them all up now. So this is equal to four times 16 is 64. This is equal to four times eight, which is equal to 32. This is equal to um, uh, eight times two to the power of five, that's two to the power of eight, which is equal to 256. Um, this thing is equal to 22 times 2 to the power of 3, which is um, 11 times 2 to the power of 4, which is well, 16 times 11, that's 176. Um, this one is 4 times 4, that's 2 to the power of 4, times 2 to the power of 6, that's 2 to the power of 10, which is 1024. And finally, this one is 512. So, once we add up all of these numbers, then the final answer, I'll just save the computation, is 2064, and that is our answer. Hi guys, Zero here. Shout out to all you physics fans out there, because today we're going to do a physics video. And the problem is as follows.